George, how do you see the concept of emergence? You and I are made of protons and electrons which form atoms, the atoms form molecules, the molecules form biomolecules and so on. So we're built up out of this, but the properties we have as people are not implied by the nature of electrons and protons, they emerge out of it. And what is true is the following, if I move my arm, my arm is moving because electrons and protons are attracting each other via the electromagnetic force. And in that sense, the forces at the bottom govern what happens at the macro levels. But I choose when to move my arm. So my brain, which is at the top level of the hierarchy, in fact tells the lower levels how to behave. And that happens every time we do some action in which we decide what is going to be happening. So the electrons and protons are making it happen, but we are telling them what to do. So are you are you <laughs> differentiating between a, a, a top down and a bottom up? Are you saying that, yes. that, that real causation is, is top down? Real causation is both ways. Ah. Um, there's, there's bottom up causation, um, all the, for instance, molecules bumping against each other, give a gas its pressure, its temperature, its density, and so on. But there's top-down causation. In the case of the gas, a simple example is if it's in a piston, if you compress the piston, then the temperature of the gas goes up. That's top-down causation. And how do you um, see emergence working at different hierarchical levels? Uh, we can talk at the microstructure yeah. of, of, of particles and, and uh, yeah. cellular structure, and, and, and science is the, this hierarchy. Do you, yes. do you see it different? What you get is you get phenomenological laws at each level. You have laws of physics, nuclear physics govern the nucleus. You have atomic physics governing the atom. You have chemistry governing the chemistry level. And one of the remarkable things about all of this is the different levels decouple. In other words, if you're a motor mechanic, you don't have to study quantum <laughs> physics. If you're um, a cook, you don't have to study nuclear physics and so on because the levels decouple. And so, in fact, there are levels of description at each level. What is crucial is top-down action, whereby what I decide, at the, what, what the higher levels do is they set the conditions for the lower levels. Maybe an example might be a computer, in which there are these little gates with electrons going backwards and forwards, but what happens there is determine, I type some stuff in, that's the top lowest level, and that tells those lower levels what should happen, that's top-down action. And this occurs not just in, in human volition, but it's throughout the physical world. Throughout, throughout the physical world. And one important thing about the, the, this is top-down action changes the context, but it actually changes the nature of things. If you have hydrogen and oxygen separate, they have certain properties. If you bind them, actually you have changed the very identity of the hydrogen atom. It's not the same when it is bound in as when it's free. It's the same with a person. A person on their own is not the same as a person in society. The fact a person exists in society changes the nature of that person. A simple example is that they will be speaking French if they're over there and they'll speak Chinese if they're over there. But the society acts top-down onto the individual and imprints in the brain certain things from the society. That's top-down action which changes the nature of the components. It sounds like this principle of top-down and bottoms-up yeah. is pandemic, that is throughout the natural world and throughout yes. the world of consciousness. Yes. It is a fundamental principle it's of how the world works. Absolutely fundamental. And in causation, one must recognize in any situation, you can always analyze it from the bottom or the same level or the top. And my favorite example is that of the jumbo jet flying along. Now, the bottom-up explanation is the wing is being impacted by molecules. They're coming from below in the top. They're moving faster above, lower below. So there's a pressure difference. Bernoulli's law says the thing will fly. That's the bottom-up explanation. The top-down explanation is that the jumbo jet flies because it was designed to fly. <laughs> and that is a highly non-trivial statement. Someone spent a great deal of money on computer-aided design, on employing technicians. They knew all about aeronautics, about structures, about um, lubrication and all this kind of stuff. So it flies because it was designed to fly and a brick doesn't fly because it wasn't designed <laughs> to fly. The same level of explanation is it's flying because the pilot's sitting there pushing the throttle and making it fly. And that is happening because someone set up a timetable which said there would be a flight from Boston to New York at that particular time. That's also highly non-trivial. The pilot was trained at great expense to do that. And someone sat down and looked at the costs and the number of passengers and all the rest of it and worked out the timetable. Now, the point about it is 
these all apply simultaneously. The pilot couldn't be flying it if the bottom up stuff didn't work. He couldn't be flying it unless it had been designed. And so, and so all levels of causation are at work simultaneously. Now, physicists tend to think only of the bottom up and they ignore the top down. But in fact, in the real world, all of these are happening at the same time. And you're talking about each of them in as a real existent phenomenon, not yep. just a human description or metaphor of, 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 of the only reality, yep. which is the, the physicist bottoms no, up, no. that there is an equal yep. reality in existence of all of them. What is crucial in, in all of this is that abstract concepts have causal effects. And my nice example of this is the rules of chess. Now, I imagine a Martian coming and watching people playing chess, and after a long time, he gets very puzzled. He's worked out this one can only go this way, and this can only go this way. So he picks up the board, he looks underneath, he can't look at anything. He picks up the pieces, he can't see anything. So he invents a force law, the force law that acts on the rooks like them, and the bishops. And, but of course, what is happening is it's a social convention which is having this effect in the real physical world. That convention is an abstract thing. It is not in any individual's mind. Again, it's written down in books. It's a social agreement. It is in people's brains, but it's also in computer programs and so on. The laws of chess are not equal to any one of those instantiations. They're an abstract thing, which is the sum of the whole of those. But that is causally effective in the physical world. So abstract ideas can be effective in terms of what happens in the physical world. And even though it's mediated by a human being, the fact that, that those abstract ideas have causal effect gives it a real existence and real reality. Absolutely. And, and another example is, of course, the power of money. This sheet of paper can buy you a it can be converted into a motor car <laughs> or a building or something. Why? Because of a social convention. The sheet of paper by itself means absolutely nothing. It is the social context, which is an agreed abstract context, which gives the causal power to that sheet of paper. And Physics can't describe that. And hence, that causal power is real. Yes, no question about it.